your lips every day And don't forget to stop and pray Cause when it seems things ain't going your way Just take a deep breath Remember he says be strong Be strong and courageous and courageous Do not be afraid Do not be dismayed Be strong Be strong and courageous and courageous For the Lord your God is with everybody and welcome to the journey today show my name is david and i'm timmy bowties hey david do you want to hear a knock knock joke uh, yeah sure okay you start i start yeah you go first um all right uh knock knock who's there uh david david who uh, d d david your friend from jts i don't believe you the only David I know is in jail. In jail? Uh, Timmy, what are you talking about? I have never been in jail. You have. I was framed by a raccoon. And if you were really David, you would know that. Are you crazy? I am David. God, come on, just open the door. No way, mister. Rhoda, don't let him in. What? Who's Rhoda? It's none of your business. You're a stranger. Rhoda. No, you're out of your mind. It can't possibly be David. Rhoda, let me in. Timmy, tell Rhoda to let me in right now or I will... I will break this door down. Oh, really? Good luck, buddy. It's made of reinforced steel. Can you believe this guy, Rhoda? He thinks he's going to break down a steel door. What does he think he's going to use? Dynamite? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Wait a second. What's that smell? David! No! Oh, so you finally admit that it's me. Ah! <laughs> it was confetti dynamite! <laughs> Joke's on you, mister. Well, that was a little extreme. I was scared to death. Well, that's what you get for locking me out. Oh, come on. It was just a little knock-knock joke. It was the worst knock-knock joke I've ever heard. Why wouldn't you just open the door? Because that's what happened in today's Bible story. What are you talking about? There aren't any knock-knock jokes in the Bible. Trust me, I've looked. No, it wasn't a joke. I mean, 
That's what happened to Peter after he broke out of jail. He went to his friend's door and was like, knock, knock. And they were like, who's there? And he was like, Peter. And they were like, no, it's not. Peter's in jail. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the story in the book of Acts. Yeah. So get this. In the Bible, there was a man named Peter who loved and followed Jesus with his whole heart. In fact, he loved him so much that nothing could stop Peter from telling people about Jesus. Seriously, not even jail. Eventually, the king had Peter arrested for being a Christian. He put him in jail where he was guarded by a total of 16 Roman soldiers. That's right. But Peter's church friends prayed for him day and night. And then something crazy happened. But wait, instead of telling them what happened, let's have them read about it for themselves. Here's how. In just a second, press pause on the video, then open your Bibles and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, press play, and we'll see you back here. Can you imagine how awesome that must have been? I mean, Peter and the angel made a mad dash through the prison, right past the guards and out the front gate. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was so unbelievable that when Peter got to his friend's house, they wouldn't open the door because they literally couldn't believe it was Peter. That's so <laughs> funny. Uh, but that shows you the power of prayer. Peter's friends had been praying for him that whole time. That's right. And God said yes to their prayer. But I'm curious what you think. Do you think God says yes to every prayer? Well, I know this much. God loves when we pray to him. And we can pray to God about anything. But I don't think that means he'll always give us everything we ask for. And you know why? Why? Well, let me show you with a little challenge. Oh, yeah! Challenge time! For this challenge, we're going to use something called the Prayer Intercept 2000. What? The Prayer Intercept 2000? Yeah. It's the latest, greatest gadget that lets us listen in on people's prayers. We just turn it on, aim it at the sky, and intercept the prayers on their way to heaven. You're kidding me. Well, let's give it a try. Okay, watch this. Control Tower, this is Flight 1308. Will invisible airplanes ever be a thing? Flight 1308, possibly, but I just can't see them taking off. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Control Tower. Um, that was a weird prayer. Uh, yeah, that wasn't a prayer, Timmy. I, I think we're picking up the local airport. Let me just make a little adjustment. And here we go. Dear God, please give me a new bike and a new video game. Wait, no. Actually, I want 10 new video games and new shoes and definitely a new TV for my room. And while you're at it, how about a new brother, too? Thanks, God. You're, like, totally awesome. No way. That prayer was bonkers. It totally was. Uh, but what do you think was wrong with that prayer? Well... It clearly sounds like this girl thinks God is Santa Claus. I mean, she's just asking for a bunch of stuff that she doesn't really need. Right! And what if her brother knew she was trying to replace him? Uh, seriously! So, what do you think would have made that prayer better? Well, it's okay to ask God for things. But God only promises to provide us with what we need, not with everything we want. So... Maybe she could ask God for something she really needs, like a new friend at school or more patience with the brother she has. Okay, 
let me try it now. Dear God, I really need your help with something. You see, there's this kid on my street who just keeps picking on me. So I was wondering if maybe you could just smite him with the plague. Smite him really good, God. Fill his room with frogs and maybe even make him grow an extra nose on his forehead. Then he'll be sorry he ever picked on me. Thanks, God. Amen. What? That prayer was totally crazy. Oh, man, for sure. What do you think was wrong with that one? Uh-oh. Well, for one, that boy was using God like a, a bully for hire. I mean, it was bad that the kid was picking on him, but he wants God to smite him with a plague. Seriously? An extra nose on his forehead? That's just cruel. It is. Uh, but, but what do you think would have made this prayer more pleasing to God? Well, I would say God wants us to bring our problems to him, but maybe that boy could have asked for help dealing with the bully instead of getting revenge on him. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But here's the thing. I can understand why God might say no to those prayers, but there are other times when God says no to a prayer and it's not so easy to understand. Yeah, I feel the same. Like, if you pray for a sick person to get better and they don't. Right, but there's a verse in the Bible that might help it make sense. Here's what it says. There is one thing we can be sure of when we come to God in prayer. If we ask anything in keeping with what he wants, he hears us. 1 John 5.14 In other words, God says yes when we ask for the things he wants to give us. That's right. God knows what's best for us. And when we ask for those things, he gives them to us. You know what? That makes me think of a question. How can people be praying for you? What do you think God wants for your life? Press pause and discuss. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's not always easy to understand why God says yes to some prayers and no to others. But God always hears our prayers. That's right. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that if we love and follow him, he makes everything work out for our good. Yeah. So whether the answer to your prayer is yes or no, just know that it's because God loves and cares for you. So good. And so true. Hey, kids, as always, we love hanging out with you. Let's do it again next week. Yeah, for sure. Until then, remember, we love you, your church loves you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next week. <laughs> Timmy, what are you doing? I found some more of your confetti dynamite. I don't have any more confetti dynamite. <laughs>